to uh, TCP v4 connect. Uh, this is the corresponding user space code. By the way, this code is really from uh, the original BCC code. Um, as you can see, the user space code in this example, it it handles command line uh, arguments in this case, passing uh, the configuration of the user, and it loads and uh, clean up the eBPF programs, clean up the maps so it doesn't leak any memory. And it also loops to read the data of the map to, and then format the output to something the user can easily to read. So now the next question, as you can see, the user program is actually pretty complicated. Um, what if we could just write the kernel program? Because the user space program actually takes uh, way more lines of code than the kernel in this example, right? And also, we love as solo, we love the Docker experience. How many of you used Docker before, right? Uh, do you like, like the Docker to be able to build, right? To be able to push, and then you can pull somebody else registry, right? So we all love that Docker experience experience. So this is uh, the open source Bumblebee project was born. So Solo allows Bumblebee, I believe, in January this year. So if you scan that QR code, that would take you to bumblebee.io. We recently applied Bumblebee to be a CNCF sandbox project. So finger crossed uh, we will be accepted. So essentially, Bumblebee is enable you to easily build uh, your eBPF programs and to be able to publish that program program to an OCI compliant registry and enable your audience, your users, to be able to take the program from the registry so you can easily run the program. Um, on top of that, Bumblebee also allow you to focus on writing eBPF code while taking care of the user space component for you, automatically exposing your data as metrics and logs. So um, Bumblebee uh, writes uh, lib uh, is lib uh, supports libbpf compatible BPF code. Uh, it doesn't support like the legacy uh, BCC based eBPF code. Um, it provides a containerized build environment so you can easily build your eBPF program and then uh, push it uh, and run the programs with the OCI registry. So let's talk about building uh, with Bumblebee. So as I mentioned, we provide pre-built containerized build environment. As part of this environment, which is this image you see here, it essentially includes uh, the compiler, uh, which is the LL. VM and Clown, because we only support C at the moment. It also supports some, uh, we also embed the BPF headers uh, along with the operating system, uh, Debian here, as part of the builder image. When you take your eBPF program and build with Bumblebee, you essentially run the bbuild command. And uh, then you can, uh, Bumblebee is going to take your eBPF program, build into the ELF file, which is the bytecode we talked about early. And then Bumblebee also packages the ELF file into the Bumblebee OCI image, which you can uh, take that image to push it to any OCI registry compli uh, compliant registry. When you run the uh, Bumblebee OCI images, uh, what you can do is using our runner. So you can run a local image, you can run a remote image, you can run somebody else's your image as long as you trust it. Um, so let's walk through how this works. So with the moment you specify b run command to run the images, uh, what it's going to do is uh, we're going to try to pull down the images to the local machine if it doesn't exist. And then we're going to load your eBPF program as part of the image. Remember, the bytecode is part of the image. So we're going to load your eBPF program in the kernel for you. In the meanwhile, we're also going to create the map for you so your eBPF program can interact with the map. And Bumblebee, uh, as part of the running, Bumblebee also watch the desired map and output the, the data from the map and emit the metrics for you so you can config like permissions to, uh, to read that data. 
All right, so writing eBPF programs with Bumblebee. Uh, in this example, uh, this is the same TCP Connect C. In this example, we walked through earlier where we focus on just the eBPF program portion. So uh, this is the event uh, which hash map, uh, which contains uh, the dimension structure, which has source destination address. And uh, on the right side, we have uh, the interaction of the map, right? So we are reading the source and destination from the event, and, the, and then we are updating all that relevant information to the map. So the, map, the hash map has all the information related uh, to the TCP connect event that we want to capture. So running with Bumblebee, uh, in this example, you can see uh, the source and destination address where you specify in your struct. We're going to display it uh, in, as part of the Bumblebee UI. And the value, which is the map of the counter of the map, we're going to display like how many times from the source and destination here. We'll also emit, uh, emit the metrics automatically for you without you needing to do anything. So you can see all the events related to TCP v4 connect with source and destination, uh, all captured as the events uh, in the metrics. And this is another screenshot of the events uh, from Permises. With that, I would love to show you guys a demo. Um, yesterday, as I was showing demo, I had a lot of Wi-Fi issues. So hopefully, finger crossed today, I would uh, be doing better, but I did get the demo recorded. So, so this is a demo idea developed uh, to run uh, out of memory ARM Kios application uh, with the to detect the out of memory Kios uh, with the help with eBPF. In case you are not familiar, what does ARM Kios mean, right? So, uh, if you Google this, uh, this blog was very helpful. Right, so ARM Kios is all about Linux uh, ARM Kios kernel process. So uh, Linux kernel uh, detects um, this process continuous monitors the node memory to determine memory exhaustion. So if such a condition was detected, it will, it will attempt to kill the best process, right? So it kills the least number of process to minimize the damage. So this is not something related to Kubernetes. Um, it's actually related to uh, about Linux kernel process. When I first uh, saw my pods has uh, ARM Kio status, in my Kubernetes. I actually thought it was from Kubernetes, so this blog really explained that well. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is we are um, provisioning a virtual machine in the cloud, and that virtual machine is going to be our playground for the demo to, um, to help us to observe OMKIO event inside of a Kubernetes cluster. So we're hoping to, you know, with this to get a Kubernetes cluster with kind, and we're hoping to deploy some pods with memory leaks, and then we're hoping to uh, leverage Bumblebee to detect uh, that pod uh, and the process within that pod that's causing the ARM kiosk events. Does anyone have any questions while we stand up the environments? I know the room is pretty cold. I feel like my hands are so freezing. All right, so we do have an environment, and hopefully the Wi-Fi stay with me. So now, um, in my environment, uh, it's a VM in the cloud. We're starting a Kubernetes uh, cluster now, so you can uh, see I probably have uh, my Kubernetes cluster running. I don't have anything in the default namespace, and uh, you know I just have a core DNS, and uh, I have some nodes, hopefully. Yeah, I have three nodes, one master, two worker. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the 
the Leap BPF tools, uh, which has the ohm key, right? So we're going to look at uh, this uh, BPF.C program, which I have it open here. So this is very similar as the TCP connector I showed you earlier, which we have a map um, that's, uh, that's been created, and it's hooked up to the ohm key process in the Linux kernel. And it's trying to read out um, some of the data, like the uh, from uh, where the where the uh, which process is from and which target process got ohm killed, and uh, you know it's trying to write that data to the map so the user program can consume. Uh, the, there is also a matching. Um, omkio.c program, uh, which I believe is the user, um, the user program. So the user program is actually a lot longer. Uh, in this user program, we have like the arguments related to the commands. Uh, we're passing the arguments. We we'll handle the events, and uh, you know we have a main method which we need to. Um, pass the map and uh, output the data so the user can consume that. So as you can see, it's like 189th of user code. Um, so let's see how Bumblebee can help out, right? So you don't have to worry about uh, user space code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download this uh, eBPF program, OMKIO, that we just reviewed together on my machine. Um, and then also on my machine, I already have another version of the ohm key that uh, works with Bumblebee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the two programs so we can take a look at the difference together. Um, so the first difference is um, we didn't include a header here because it's a small program, so we didn't need uh, uh, to include to have multiple files. And the second difference is uh, instead of using a, a perform event array, we're using a ring buffer. Uh, this is because a ring buffer allows you to reserve, um, and also it's better performing. And Bumblebee also supports ring buffer, not perform event array at the moment. And uh, we also change uh, this to the map.counter so that Bumblebee can display the counter on the Bumblebee's UI. And then, as part of the uh, the K probe, uh, it's uh, it's relatively the same, except uh, you know we deal with uh, ring buffer uh, with the event, um, the perf event array. As you can see, we can reserve uh, some of the. Um, reserve uh, a, a good size for the ring buffer. And then we essentially get uh, the current PID ID. We're getting the, um, we're getting the target, um, we're also getting the target, um, the, the target process ID and the target communication. And then we are submitting, uh, write that data back to the ring buffer so the user space program, which is Bumblebee, can access that data. So uh, with that, we're going to get out of the WIM differ program. And uh, what we're going to do next, um, let me see how much time I have. Um, so what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to download Bumblebee. So uh, the download Bumblebee is really simple. We just run the curl command, specify which version we want to download, and now we should have the B command on the path. OK, so um, now we can review this program, uh, which actually is very similar, which we just reviewed through the diff program. Um, so we're not going to review in detail, but the key thing is we're using a ring buffer. We'll capture um, the from, which is the source of the PID, and also the target PID that got ohm killed. And we'll also capture the pages uh, of the memory when it happens, right, when the ohm kill events happened. And then we're writing all that data into the map uh, through the eBPF program, uh, a part of the uh, the K probe here. 
All right, so we have our ARM Kia program, and we're going to copy that program into the current working directory, and then we are using Bumblebee to build it. So what Bumblebee does right now, remember the B builder has the compiler, right? So it's going to build the eBPF program, which is armkio.c here, and it's going to try to build it as a, as a bytecode, right? So, um, so the alpha file we talked about earlier, um, so it's going to build that alpha file, and then it's going to package it as a OCI images. So you are going to see the OCI images locally here on my machine. Actually, I shouldn't say on my machine, but somewhere in the cloud which you are seeing locally to that VM. So now we build the image. I already have a registry running locally, which you can see I'm running registry two. Um, so what we're going to do next is push that image we just built together um, to my local registry. Well, that was pretty fast. I'm so thankful about the Wi-Fi today. And now we are going to take a minute to run that image. So this is the Bumblebee UI. Uh, when you run that image, so um, you can see nothing happens, right? Because we don't have any interesting events. So uh, let's try to generate some events, um, some arm kill events. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to create a daemon set together. The reason we create a daemon set is uh, we want to have a B runner um, to run the images we just created together, which is Omkio uh, version one. And the daemon set, uh, one thing I want to highlight is have a label, which is an app called Bumblebee. And also the daemon set exposes a port uh, named HTTP monitoring with a contain container port 1981. So that's for permissive uh, pod monitoring later on, which we will show you uh, shortly. So we just deploy the daemon set uh, to my Kubernetes cluster. You should see the daemon set as pods. So it's running. Remember at the beginning, we said we have three nodes for my Kubernetes cluster. So daemon set deploy one pod for each of the node. So that's it's running. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install permissives. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is add through Helm. I did have Helm pre-installed. So we're going to add the permissives uh, community Helm chats and do a Helm repo update. And then we're going to install uh, permissives, uh, the cube permissives stack um, in the monitoring uh, namespace. So, uh, so now we just added to the repo, and we got repo updated, and now it's installed the permissive stack. So hopefully, finger crossed, uh, I think this is also using Wi-Fi space. So let's check uh, if that's running. All right, uh, looks like maybe we have one. It's not running, but the rest are thankfully running. Okay, that sounds good. Um, in addition to that, uh, let's see if this reach is running. Yes, it did. All right. We're going to deploy a pod monitor to scrape our Bumblebee pods. So if you remember, when we deployed the Bumblebee daemon set, right, we had um, app equals Bumblebee. So that's how the pod monitoring is configured to select uh, our Bumblebee app. And if you remember the metrics endpoint, we had a port called HTTP monitoring, and uh, the pass is on slash metrics. So uh, that's how we config the pod monitoring to scrape the Bumblebee pod on the HTTP monitoring pod. All right, so we got that deployed. Now the next thing we are doing is to do a port forwarding. The reason we do a port forwarding to Prometheus is just mainly making sure we can access the Prometheus UI. So hopefully the UI is, yeah, because of uh, that port forwarding. Now the next thing we are going to do together is um, 
why don't you deploy a bad uh, memory leak pod? So, um, so as part of this pod, it's going to trigger uh, memory, because uh, it's keeping leak memory, so it's going to trigger OMKIL events. Um, so as you can see, it requested a 64 ma uh, megabyte of memory, but it has a limit of 128 mem um, megabyte memory. So when it hits the limit, it's going to trigger OMKIL events. So let's check it out. Uh, get pods because you can see it already crash once, right? It restart. Now, if I go back to Bumblebee, what do you think is going to happen, right? So Bumblebee was through our eBPF program hooked to the OMKIL event, and Bumblebee was able to detect, right, uh, from which PID uh, that's causing the OMKIL event, and eventually this is the target PID that's got killed. As you can see in this case, because our example was very simple, so the from to the to the target, it's the same PID number. So that's the PID number when you get into the out of memory leak uh, part, uh, that's the PID number gets killed. Um, the pages is uh, interesting. So I actually did a calculation of the pages. So one page is 4K, so uh, 32768 uh, pages is about 131 megabytes. So if you remember when we deployed this part, the limit is 128 megabytes. So whenever it hits over the limit, that's when the OMKIL events get triggered, and that's when the part gets uh, you know, killed and um, and uh, you know restarted. So uh, with that, I also want to show you one last thing. I know we are close to round of time. Uh, is uh, I want to show you uh, that you can also curate the data in permissives. The way to curate the data is curate the events. If I can have my permissives back here. Sorry, this is, yeah. Responding now. So, uh, this is uh, a convention is the OMKIL, is the eBPF program. Um, so, uh, the, the events, uh, so you can see every single event that you saw on the Bumblebee um, interface here is also captured in permissives. So, this is really useful. So, you can set up with alert or you can generate your own UI to render this. Um, so, uh, very nice way to get all the, uh, all the events uh, on this. With that, I think that reaches the end of the demo. Uh, now I want to um, pause one thing to mention, you know, we are at the booth. Uh, if you're interested to ask more questions about eBPF, it's still Envoy. And we are also hiring. In fact, we run an eBPF workshop tomorrow, one of my coworker, Adam. So if you want to do some hands-on with eBPF, I highly recommend that. Um, that's all I have. I want to open up, see if you guys have any questions. I'm very thankful the Wi-Fi was good today. Yesterday I had so much panic moments. And the best part is the audience actually helped me figure out what's going on with my commands. Uh, and uh, you, know, you guys were there, so it was very engaging. Um, so any questions? I mean, if you guys uh, wanted to learn about eBPF, I highly recommend Bumblebee. Um, I also wrote a blog about Get Started with eBPF with Bumblebee. It shows the program, uh, a Hello World program, which is a little bit simpler than this program. Um, so that's a great way to get started with eBPF. It shows you all the steps you need to do. Um, like I said, the best way to learn is actually hands-on. Um, to you could see you could listen to a lot of talks, but uh, the hands-on really gets me to understand, you know, the interaction between the eBPF program and the user space, and uh, you know why you need both. You know what are the scenarios, uh, how you can potentially leverage Bumblebee so you don't have to write the user space program. 
So we're really excited about Bumblebee. We're taking it to CNCF as a sandbox project. If we, any of you are interested to the project, we certainly welcome any type of contribution or collaboration, you know, help us shape the roadmap of Bumblebee. Thank you so much.